wanted to talk about transitions. I have a lot of transitions going on in my life right now. The obvious, um, now I'm the pastor's wife. So that one going pretty well, I think. Um, I think I'm adjusting to it and I have had a lot of support, which is very nice. Um, you know, I think there's, there can be a certain amount of expectations that, that people can have sometimes for, um, for pastors and their families that they need to be, um, perfect or better than other people, which is of course silly because pastors and their families are regular people just like everyone else who goes to church. Um, so the nice thing is that I have had so much support and encouragement from um, friends and family from the other women of my church. I've, I've had a bunch of them tell me to just go ahead and let the kids be kids and let them run around and have fun and oh boy is that freeing. <laughs> I was afraid that I was gonna have to be, you know, strict with my kids to try to fit the stereotype. And um, it's been so freeing to have everyone encouraging me to just let them be kids. And uh, I mean, you've seen my kids in videos that Pastor Andy has made and a little bit in my own videos, but they are very outgoing, wild children sometimes. So I'm appreciating that. But I wanted to talk about transitions because transitions can be difficult for anybody, whether you go out and purposely look for things to, to change and, and make changes on purpose in your life or not, they happen to you. Transition just happens because getting older makes changes and you know, the people around you will choose to change and that will in turn change your life. And, so I've been thinking about that a lot lately because by taking the job as a pastor means not only is our life changing and our kids' lives are changing, but our friends' lives are gonna change and our kids' friends' lives are gonna change and it just creates a ripple effect. Anytime anybody does anything, it affects those around you. So, how do you deal with that? I think the best thing to do in those times of change is to focus on the good, obviously. I feel like that's, that's kind of a duh. Focus on the good. And then rely on the people who are around you. More often than not, there are people in your life who you don't even realize are rooting for you. It's kind of a funny thought, but you know, most of the time when we go through transitions like this, when a job changes or, um, or you're moving or uh, somebody dies, you start to feel alone. And the truth is, you're never alone. And I, I know, I know, you probably expect me to say, you know, Jesus is always in your heart and he's with you. And that's true. That is true. But my main point really is that there are people in your corner that you don't even realize are there. People from your church who, who just love seeing you. When I was a teenager, there was a uh, there was a couple, Jamie and Dave, 
and I thought that they were the coolest people ever. And I thought that, you know, they were a lot like Pastor Andy and I, and I wanted to grow up and be just like them and have kids just like theirs. But did I ever say anything to them? Nope. No, I didn't. I just think that's, I just think that's bizarre. Like, why do we keep these things to ourselves? If you love someone, let them know. I don't know. It's real weird being a Christian because you are, you are family members with people that you don't even talk to. The first time I went to South Africa when I was 18 years old, that there were people that like swarmed the van. And at first, I felt like, I felt like a rock star. <laughs> but there were so many people that just swarmed the area to come and greet us and say hello. And the thing is, once I got out of the van, I just, I felt an instant connection and love for the people, for all of the people, because we were family. Even though I, I didn't know them, they lived in another continent, but they're still family. So I guess basically what I'm saying is when you're in a transition, it's important to, to take moments to look around you and notice who's in your corner. And then probably more importantly, when, when you love somebody, or look up to someone, or you're proud of someone, whether they are older, younger, same age group as you, it doesn't matter. If you see somebody and you just appreciate them and have a weird family of Jesus love for them for no reason, tell them, just tell people. I was so blessed the first time I did that. Um, there was a little girl that I met, she was about five at the time, and just fell in love with her right from the start. When she was about 10 or 11, I finally told her. I got the opportunity to pray for her in church and I told her that I loved her, that I just thought that she was the best thing ever. And <laughs> the look on her face when I told her that and gave her a big hug was just, so amazing. Sila, if you're watching, I love you. <laughs> and it it's just amazing. It blessed me, it blessed her, and I really think that's what Christianity and, and church family should be all about, is let people know. Let people know that you love them, that you're in their corner, that you're rooting for them, so that when we go through these times of transitions and struggles and trials, we'll be able to come through them so much easier and more resiliently. I'm gonna miss my friends. I'm gonna miss my friends a lot. But I also know that just because I move an hour away doesn't mean they're gonna stop being my friends. And doesn't mean they're gonna stop praying for me even if I only see them once a year. And I think that's really important. All right, those are my thoughts for today. Time for hair. So I don't know how a video about transitions got turned into a video about friendship, but basically, let somebody know you love them. Here's a funny video of my son transitioning into a hundred year old man for the hundredth day of school. I don't wanna to go too much further there. I just... What happened to your hair, Jacob? I bowled it! Bowling?